Hey everyone, I'm here with the first seven days of the 31 days of tarot challenge. This is a challenge that Ethany um, on her channel, she started a couple of years ago. It's a lot of fun to do and um, I'm really happy to do it again this year. So I'm thankful to her um, for doing this and it's really cool to see like the other participants and see what their answers are and kind of compare things. So I encourage you um, to go look up the hashtag for it and look at the other people as well and go to her site. She's also doing it on her, um, she has like a Facebook group as well. So she's also posting on there too. So it's pretty cool. It's nice to see everybody kind of the tarot community doing something together so I think it's pretty cool so what I'm gonna do is um, some people will do like uh, they'll answer a question every day but I'm gonna do just the I'm gonna do like seven at a time um, to kind of like do my thing out there put it out there so the first question is uh, reading and lesson for 2019 so for me um, I'm not gonna do uh, I did my own kind of reading for myself with some other cards at um, the end of 2018, but I am going to show you what my card for the year is. So the way that you calculate what your tarot card is, is you take the day and the month, the numbers. Um, so for example, my birthday is August 15th, so I add 8 and 15 together, and I get 23. And then you add that number to the year. So 2019 plus 23 is, then you let me think about this, it's... Um, it's 20, um, 20, 50, no, no, it's 2042. So then what I do is you add those numbers together. So I got 2042, so I did two plus four plus two, that is eight. So eight is the strength card. And so anything, if whatever number yours works out to be, um, anything under 21, um, is a tarot card. If it's over that, say you got a result like 24, you would add two and four and you'd get six and that would be your number. So that's how you, that's how you calculate it. So for me, it is the strength card. This is the strength card in the, um, revelations tarot. There it is there. I'm going to adjust this light. Let's see if I can get it a little bit different. There we go. That's better. So this is the strength card. This is also my birth card as well. So I know that this is a year where I really have to kind of put the work in, put my head down, get to work. And a lot of it is not about changing things externally. It's really about doing some inner work on myself. Um, and it's also about being patient and really looking at the long term and working hard on those goals. It's also saying that there might be some things that challenge me this year and that's okay, um, that I can definitely, <laughs> I can do that. I can work on it. Um, so it's saying, you know, you have the strength, you have the ability to get through things. So that's my card considering too, there's, um, you know, we've got Saturn and Capricorn this year. So we've got a lot of like kind of strength stuff. We've got um, Uranus moving into Taurus. There's a lot of earthly, like long-term, like go slowly get things done kind of energy. So uh, that is my card and lesson for the year. Um, the second question is, uh, what were the top five decks that you purchased um, or were released in 2018? So here are the top five decks that I got uh, last year. The first is, of course, the Spirit Keepers Tarot by Benavelle Wen. Very excited when this came out. I can't believe she did this whole thing in a matter of months. This deck is just absolutely amazing. I'm very lucky to have a first edition copy. They, she made a thousand of these and they sold out like within a week. So I was very, very blessed to get a copy. I really love this deck. I'm actually thinking I might more use this for personal work than for reading for others. I just think the whole thing is done so beautifully from the gilding to the artwork to the book. She just, she put together a really beautiful and wonderful deck. So I am very, very happy. That's um, probably my favorite deck that I got for 2018. Um, I also got the Mystic Monday Tarot, which was kind of a surprise for me. It wasn't really on my list, um, but I saw the shop and there was just something about shiny things. I'm like a magpie. Shiny things get to me. But I just loved um, working with the colors in this deck. It was just like a really fun kind of surprising deck that I got to work with for this year. So um, again, I'm really glad that I pick the one up. I find that I'm starting to get more decks that are a little bit more modernistic, I would say, in the way that their illustrations are, which is kind of a bit of a surprise for me. But hey, this was a nice surprise for 2018. 
Um, the next one that was on my list, or wasn't really on my list, it was kind of like a maybe, and then I saw it, and I'm really glad I got it, is the Line Strider Tarot. So this is a deck that, um, again, wasn't, like I said, on my list, but I really love, it's got like a beautiful kind of, oh, it's upside down, watercolor, uh, let's see, how can I get that, the ring light's kind of in the way, there we go, I don't know if that's picking them up super good, but it's got, it's interesting because it's such a minimal deck, but it's got these like beautiful pops of color that are just, it's just gorgeous. So again, another purchase that I was surprised by, but I really, I really love this. And this is a deck I'm definitely going to be working with in 2019 as well. Um, another one was on my list was the Tarot of Wonderland. I'm a sucker for all things Alice in Wonderland, and so I'm glad that I got this. Um, I love the new Llewellyn boxes, I have to say, with the magnetic closure. So much better. So much better presentation. Um, this was a deck where Barbara Moore wrote the book with it. So, uh, you know, it's a pretty good book. It's just a really fun kind of deck. Um, that I really just love working with. It's a very summery kind of deck. I'm going to be working with this this summer for sure. Love the colors on this. Love the whimsical nature of it. Uh, it appeals to my humorous side, that's for sure. So that is um, a lovely 2018 deck there. And then the other one that I got um, that was on my list was the Druid Craft Tarot. Now this is in kind of, um, it's not the old, old style of Llewellyn box, but it is kind of flimsier, but still one you can kind of keep stuff in, which is good. Um, there we go. I'm trying to get that ring light off. There. Okay, there we go. Um, that's the book. It is a big deck. I have considered trimming it and I've never trimmed a deck so I'm a little worried about it but I've seen it trimmed and it looks gorgeous. It is just like a gorgeous deck. Um, of course, uh, what's the artist's name on this again? I always forget his name. Will Worthington, right? I always want to, it sounds like it's fake to me but of course that is his name. Um, but it's just got gorgeous, gorgeous artwork. So I'm really, really glad I picked this up. So, so nice. So um, those were my top five tarot decks. Um, the next question is, what were your top five oracle decks? Okay, so let's, let's move these. My top five oracle decks. First of all, this is a deck I'm using for myself for daily draw readings. It is the Spirit Animal Oracle by Colette Baron reed I love her decks. Um, and she does not disappoint her and... Um, I can't remember the artist's name, but they just getting, it seems like they just keep getting better and better and better. I love the new um, kind of matte finish on the new Hay House um, cards. It's really nice. It's just, it's gorgeous. It's a lovely deck to work with. As always, she's got a nice little guidebook. I actually prefer this format over uh, the Mystical Shaman format of the way they box the deck. So I like having it all in one box. Very, very nice. Um, I also got the Angels and Ancestors Oracle deck by Kyle Gray. He's another one that I quite like. And again, um, it's Hay House and they're using this new kind of matte format, which is really nice. It's got beautiful, gorgeous colors. Um, it's a very earthy deck, I find, as well. It's just really nice deck to work with. And I love the backings, too. The backings are really cool as well. It's a very, very earthy kind of deck um, for him, which I kind of like. It's a very fall deck to me, that's for sure. And then I did get the Mystical Shaman Oracle. This one came in like a big box, and then there was a book, and then there's a little box, and I was just like, I just prefer having a box with a book in it so it's all in one together, because now I have to find another place store, like this big giant box or the book or whatever. So again, um, it doesn't disappoint with the artwork. This was my 2018 Daily Draw deck for my altar. So I didn't use this in so much in readings for others. It was more just like a daily draw thing. But I just found the art to be really, really beautiful. Lovely, lovely deck. Um, I also picked up a deck that wasn't a new release, but it was, you know, it was new to me, is the Crystal Mandela Oracle. 
um, by Alana Fairchild. This is a really beautiful deck. Um, it's probably my favorite crystal deck. I have a couple of their crystal decks, but this year one of my goals is to go through my uh, decks and kind of pare them down a bit. And I really only need one crystal deck, and I think this is the one that I'm going to keep. So there's no, it's just all these beautiful man mandalas. And then she connects each of the crystals with um, an ascended master or an angel um, or a goddess. And it's just, be again, it's got these just beautiful, gorgeous artwork. And then she's got this thick, beautiful book with, um, you know, she always has such a, like, wonderful kind of healing messages and healing work that you can do so um, I do really like this one as well and then the other deck I got which again wasn't really on my list but then I was seeing it other people work with it and I was like you know what I don't really I have like a, a tree deck but I don't really have like a plant deck I have lots of animal decks a few crystal decks that kind of thing but I got the Hedge Witch Botanical Oracle which is the same person that did the Lion Strider Tarot and I like the Lion Strider so I was like hmm, I'm going to check this out and I'm glad again I did. So again you've got the nice magnetic closure, the new Llewellyn um, style box which is great. You've got this lovely book in here and then of course you've got this uh, nice presentation for the cards. Um, you've got the same kind of style as with the Lion Strider. It's beautiful. It's kind of beautiful watercolor with lots of white around. It's just they're just gorgeous. And then the book gives you like some information about the plant and medicinal uses, but also the magical kind of meaning as well. So I really like that. So it's helped me to kind of learn a little bit more about plants as well. So those are my top five Oracle decks. Um, the next question was your top five tarot books. Um, I don't buy a ton of tarot books, but I did pull two out that I enjoyed this year. The first I think is the most comprehensive tarot guidebook. Uh, the book of maps that came with my Spirit Keepers Tarot. I'm still not finished reading it. It is just like packed with information. It is so, so good. She explains like, she's got spreads in here. She's got meanings of all the cards. Um, she's got, there's stuff about alchemy. Like it's just, it's an incredible, incredible book. And I'm not even finished it and I'm still raving about it. The other one that I picked out, like this one's very esoteric and, um, you know, got a lot of good occult kind of knowledge to it. But for the uh, less advanced people, but even for people like me, I enjoy stuff like this. The Everyday Tarot by Bridget Esselmont, who has, you know, Biddy Tarot, her website, her podcast, all of that. Um, this is just, you know, the design on this is just gorgeous. And um, it's a great beginner's book, I think. But it also has, you know, even for people like me, I love reading stuff like this too. I love reading about spreads. Like it's just a really great book as well. Again, I'm about halfway through this, so I gotta finish reading this one as well. Um, the next question is, um, the card that stalked you in 2018. I didn't really keep track of this, but last year I had the chariot as my year card, which would tell me, go for it, girl, you can do it. Try new things, go, go, go. So that was kind of my lesson for last year and this year is telling me to kind of maybe not rush into things so fast but just keep building on what I've already built so note taken and then the deck you finally crossed off your wish list that was the druid craft tarot which I showed earlier and then the deck you worked with most and the deck that I worked with most is a deck that I worked last year and that is just reaching for it here the shadowscapes tarot so this is probably my favorite tarot deck it is beautiful. I love all of the beautiful watercolory fairy like images on here. It's probably one of the decks I read with most for others with. I just find it a really gentle deck, but still pretty straightforward. So those are my answers for uh, the first seven days of the, 20, of the 31 Days of Tarot Challenge. I'd love to see if you put up a 31 Day of Tarot video, let me know, or a blog post or something. Um, and yeah, thank you so, so much for watching. And um, yeah, peace, love, oh, peace, love, 